come on and talk about Mr. CM Punk. Isn't it interesting that CM Punk, so he leaves WWE, whatever that was now, 20, I don't even know anymore. 14. Leave, okay, he leaves WWE. He is the baby face with wrestling fans, right? Leaves WWE, he's got a staph infection that's like mistreated, and he's got Triple H saying all this shit about him, taking drug tests and stuff. He's the baby face, right? Then all he had to do was spend the next three, four years talking shit about pro wrestling, crapping all over pro wrestling, going into the UFC, getting his ass kicked against plugs, although uh, Gall wasn't a plug, but the other guy was. Yeah. And then, allegedly, promising Colt Cabana they'd cover his legal fees, reneging on it, and now, in that four-year span, he has kind of shifted from the wrestling fan darling babyface to the asshole with most wrestling fans. Don't you agree that he's kind of done that pivot? Speaking of pivots? To, to, a, to a degree, yeah. I mean, in four and a half, five years, Fightful and WrestleZone are the only two outlets that have anything to do with wrestling that he's spoken to. And we had to, we had to go to his media day yeah. in... I think it was Milwaukee. Steve went there and to his court case to yeah. get those. Yeah. To get those. He has no interest in in that. I mean, he does the thing at Pro Wrestling Tees. Yeah. And actually, uh, when I spoke to a penis druid last week, <laughs> when I spoke to a penis druid exclusively on FightfulWrestling.com, he said that Punk was in great spirits at the signing. Right. Nobody was asking him about all in. That probably helped contribute to his positive attitude. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or Mike Johnson, or what was what was the guy's name that knocked him out or that beat him? Mike Jackson. I Mike don't Jackson. Think Mike Jackson. Mike Jackson. Yeah, that's right. I don't. I, I'm assuming nobody talked to him about Mike Jackson either, right? Yeah, I get the feeling Mike Johnson might be the only person <laughs> Mania Punk right now. So let's talk uh, about Punk. So he was interviewed this past week by Four One One Mania and by Ariel Hawani, uh, who, yeah. people, who people might know from MMA fighting, and now he's with ESPN. So yeah, uh, he's, he's been interviewed by 411 too. They, they have a That's what I just said, right? by 411. Yeah. And uh, he was doing it to promote Ultimate Beastmaster, which is a reality show on Netflix, and Punk is the host this season for the American team or whatever. So that was the catalyst for him doing these interviews. But of course, when you're going to do these interviews with those types of media, they're going to ask you about wrestling or they're going to ask you about MMA. Yeah. And so he was asked about training MMA. He said, quote, as soon as I wrap here, meaning uh, doing the interviews and all that, I'll be right back in the gym. He was asked why 411 if he's going to fight again, and he said, quote, I don't know. I'm focused on this movie right now. You'll have to ask me when we wrap, which is in a couple of weeks. He's talking about a movie that he's doing. It's a small budget movie called Girl on the Third Floor. Uh, so that's what he's doing right now. Then when he was interviewed by Errol Hilwani, he said mostly the same stuff. Uh, he said that he was not given a firm offer to do All In, which is something you hear a lot out of punk. You know, the, you'll, you'll hear him ask, you know, are you going to do this show or are you going to do this show? And so I was like, well, I haven't gotten a firm offer. I know that the Young Bucks have said, well, we hit him up and said, are you available? Do you want to do it? Punk's mentality is, if you don't say, here's my opponent, here's the dollar amount, then to him it wasn't an offer, which I guess is kind yeah. of fair. But uh, so he said that. And then he also said, when it comes to wrestling, quote, there's nothing that interests me in wrestling. Um... Do you think he's following wrestling at all? Because given the current landscape, given this revolution, as Jericho calls it, with the independent scene, how can he not? How can he say there's nothing interesting about pro wrestling unless he's either not following it or he's still pretty sour about it? I think he worked himself into a shoot, Jimmy. I think that when he went on the Cabana Show, which I think are two of the all-time best podcasts in wrestling history, those are incredibly enlightening podcasts and very transparent. He was so negative that I think that he feels like he would go back on his word almost if he mm. jumped right back in. Now, to be fair, he did say, oh, I'm not going to say never, ever, ever, but he has at times. Uh, he told Chris Van Vliet. He told Chris Van Vliet. He said never, never ever. That's what he so, said. It's really, really hard to tell, but also in those interviews, like, I mean, I know 4 on 1 didn't ask him about wrestling at all. They were probably and, told not to, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. So when I was told that he was doing media interviews for Ultimate Beastmaster, I was told, well, I'm pretty sure you could probably land it, but no wrestling, little MMA. I'm like, I don't really have that much interest in talking to him about Ultimate Beastmaster. I don't know what the shit an Ultimate Beastmaster is. I later find out it's like American Ninja Warrior. What if somebody asked him a question like, hey, so what do you think about Triple H as a competitor in Ultimate Beastmaster? Triple H would be the shits at Ultimate Beastmaster. I'm just I saying guarantee. it'd be a way to get punks talking about Triple H. I guess so. You know? Uh, as Dang MQ is saying in our live chat, Punk would be great on being the elite. That would be 
really entertaining.